Hello and welcome to a special London Games Festival session. My name's Chris Slight, and we're going to be talking about virtual photography. I have some amazing guests coming up on a panel. And also, the London Games Festival is going to be launching a virtual photograph competition. So stick around for information about that. Video games have given all of us the ability to jump right into games and take photographs of a stunning caliber, honestly. Like, it's getting crazy how good some of these photographs look. Speaking of which, we have a little video coming up right now, and then we'll be into the panel. So stick around. I've got some good stuff for you. Okay, so let's bring in our guest. First up, I have Mr. Duncan Harris. Duncan, how are you doing? Hello. Hello. Good. Good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, well, I'm a um, games marketing artist. Um, work for various people who have been working in the industry for about 10 years um, prior to that was uh working in magazines around um around the games industry um covering the games industry um and that's that's basically it i think and and yeah get get mentioned a bit when it comes to this games photography thing when it comes to the digital photography we'll get into that in a second uh next i want to bring in mick mick how you doing yeah, yeah, also good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Lovely Pleasure to, to be have here. You here. Yeah, you. because uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, so I am Mick Bromley. For anyone who doesn't know my real name, I'm the owner and creator of the Fourth Focus dot com. Um, I'm actually a research scientist by trade. Uh, I got into this uh, quite, you know, uh, I think it was 2017. I set up the website. Uh, and that's kind of developed what was originally just sort of a personal portfolio type page. And I've grown that over the over the years now to include, you know, in-depth reviews of the photo modes, um, contests here and there, similar to the one we're hosting now. Uh, and actually, just last year, I launched the first uh, Virtual Photography Awards. Uh, so, yeah, looking to to really take the take the medium places hopefully <laughs> yeah you you know a fair few things about a fair few things by the sounds of it so we have, <laughs> we've been we have accused right of person. that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh bringing in next uh our final guest cristiano cristiano welcome hey how's it going uh tell us a little about yourself well, uh, I am actually the guy behind the verticalgamingphotography.com. Uh, I am a, so a virtual photography based in Italy, Milan. Okay, and uh, usually you recognize my picture because they are all in portrait orientation. So I have become known for this thing that uh, has me taking pictures like this all the time. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, it's a trip of style, so I'm quite fond of it by now. God damn it. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so first, Duncan, um, mm. you mentioned you're kind of synonymous with the whole digital photography thing. Can you tell us, uh, what is virtual photography? Uh, where did it come from? And it says here, and as you said earlier, you're sort of known for inventing it. Can you tell us a little about that? Um, yeah, that might be a bit, uh, a bit of an exaggeration. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's certainly more complicated than that. Um, I mean, you could argue that it's something, it's definitely something that was always going to happen anyway. 
Um, and it is the work of a very large number of people and developers and communities of gamers. Um, if you wanted to, if you wanted to draw up some sort of definitive timeline, um, you, I mean, you could, you could go back to various points over the last ten or twenty years. Um, you could even go back as far as, say, the photo mode in Dead or Alive Two on the Dreamcast, which was. 1999 2000 or thereabouts um but i think that's that's more of an outlier um i think a good place to start would probably be closer to around 2004 um which was not so much about photo modes but more about um about the idea of having video credible video game worlds where places that you would actually want to explore and and places where kind of for the first time you were you were feeling a tension between the the sort of the critical path of a game as in how you're supposed to play it and the world that you're in and your desire to kind of explore and potentially sort of share things that you are seeing um, in those worlds. And so in 2004, you have four very important examples of those. You have Half-Life 2, and apologies if my dates are wrong. It's entirely possible. Um, Half-Life 2, Doom 3, Far Cry, and the Chronicles of Riddick escape from Butcher Bay. Um, and yeah, those, I mean, it, that, that might sound a bit unfair to games like, I don't know, No One Lives Forever or something like that. But um, that to me feels like, I guess, and also because those games were all happening on PC as well, that might have something to do with it. Um, and then at the end of 2004, and again, sorry, I've got the dates wrong, you have Gran Turismo 4, which introduces one of the first proper, in inverted commas, photo modes in games. And that is a, yeah, that's, that's an attempt. I mean, that's born out of the developer's personal love of photography, bred with one of gaming's kind of most uh, uh, one of the most technologically advanced uh, genres of games which is racing games which was always going to be one of the first ones to become photogenic so so there you have your kind of probably your your first major year for game photography then um i don't know how many people took um the Gran Turismo photo mode seriously but I know I know a lot of people were very smitten with it and really love and really sort of um well they, yeah they they um shared the um that kind of obvious passion for photography there and and saw and kind of got their first taste of how that might be applied to a to a game environment um i mean my my personal interest in it um around that time i was working at um edge magazine in the uk um and one of the things that we had to do um because edge magazine as much as possible never used um press images for games um always tried to take its own screenshots for all of the, the games it was reviewing at least um and that took an incredible amount of time and all kinds of strange sort of uh crazy techniques for trying to do that in you know, do justice to the to the games i suppose you know you're you're trying to create something that's authentic um 
that can, that is being used to illustrate the game, but you're also trying to do it in a way that looks appealing on the page. Um, and given that you know print has a high DPI requirement um, and requires a sort of very dare I say a higher quality than you'd expect to to get off the internet um, or to see on screen. Already, you're starting to think about ways to to do that across, you know, not just something like Gran Turismo that's handing it to you on a plate, um, but across all of the games that you might be encountering, um, whether that's on console or PC. So suddenly, there was a lot more, um, for me at least, a lot more thought going into you know how how do i get rid of the hud for example how do i um control the camera because a lot of the uh review code that we would get in would just so happen to to still have some of the developer's own stuff in there you know uh, cameras that you pause the game fly about um so that was my my first taste of it and that kind of developed naturally i suppose over a few years trying to make you know the games look as good as possible um and also um also just messing with the just the some of the conventions of how games were presented so i think um we were probably one of the first outlets to start showing for example to start doing screenshots in widescreen because it was around that time that um, TV, you know, games started to experiment themselves with being in widescreen. Widescreen TVs were coming along. Um, and so, yeah, we started to, to try, and if a game was available in widescreen, we would try and display it as such. And so some of the um, early techniques involved in, in doing that um, were sort of born out of there. Um, and then sort of other games, and this whole period from 2004 onwards, you see a very rapid rise in quality of um, these kinds of, uh, not always open worlds, but and not necessarily always kind of virtual film sets, but worlds in which you felt there was more to be discovered and more to be seen than... Um, than the game would normally promote or, you know, encourage you to look at. Um, I mean, that, this was still at around a time when I think a lot of gamers still had this idea that if you played a game, you were going to beat the game. You know, you would play it through as quickly as possible. You would kind of race through the levels um, in a sort of, you know, all guns blazing. Um and uh, back then, I mean, let, I think so. So my website and my sort of um, the time when it kind of became official, I guess, for me would have been around two thousand and six, two thousand and seven. And back then, if you said you were playing game, if you said you were taking screenshots for the kind of for their own sake, then you would then have to. <laughs> you would have to defend yourselves against accusations of just being incredibly strange and just not <laughs> just not playing games properly and why on earth would someone be wanting to spend their time doing that um so, so yeah and you've you, you know the backdrop of all this is that you've got games then starting to appear like the elder scrolls oblivion bioshock you know the the fidelity of the games is is ramping up considerably and the visual interest in the games is again ramping up and you could argue that the one thing that isn't moving or evolving at the same pace is the gameplay and so you have this increasing there's this tension that i was talking about with um you know between the need to progress in the game and the the manner in which the game is supposed to be played and the scope of the game world and and also the amount the volume of artwork that is um, in place being shipped out in those games and is present in those game worlds and 
also the sophistication of the technology that is rendering all that artwork and rendering those game worlds all of that seems to be evolving at a pace that's slump somewhat faster than the than the gameplay itself and so this this incentive then to show off the artwork or to show people what they might be missing um to some degree was kind of increasing so it did feel it did feel at the time that there was a real you know this was a thing that was there was a uh, a good a good cause um and a a very great reason to to try and create a kind of a showcase or a gallery of this stuff oh well duncan honestly one thing that i genuinely find fascinating as someone that grew up reading gaming magazines knowing that this kind of fidelity came from or it began it was somewhere it began in trying to get those beautiful screenshots for magazines like uh, for me yeah. edge was always a magazine that was known for having beautiful screenshots and covers and artwork and everything so that's fascinating to learn a bunch of stuff like that um i suppose moving it along um talking to uh mick and Cristiano, I'd like to know, starting with you, uh, Cristiano, actually, uh, how did you get into the virtual photography? Well, um, I have always liked taking screenshots, you know, but uh, um, photos uh, have allowed uh, us uh, to make something new. Uh, when I speak about virtual photography, it, it is not because uh, I like to use uh, uh, a fancy word just not to say, oh, no, no, I don't take screenshots. I am a virtual photography. Uh, but it is true uh, that uh, photography is a language, is a language. And uh, uh, with photo modes or specific PC tools, you can use this language to uh, portray uh, the words and characters of video games. And this is something new. This is not just uh, taking screenshots anymore. This is making photography. What fascinates me the most about uh, photography is that photography is a language that allows you to tell a story, to express movement with something that is still because at the end you only have one frame. And this is fascinating. If you manage to portray the psychology of a character, um, a whole narrative arch of a game with one shot, you really have done photography. And this is something very recent and very new. Uh, moreover, uh, virtual photography is something new, not only because it allows you to take photographs of video games. But because for the first time in the history of every form of art or entertainment, you can use the photographic language uh, to portray the originals. What do I mean by the originals? If you are a photographer and you love literature, uh, you love Shakespeare, you cannot portray the original, the real Shakespeare, okay? You can portray an actor. The same goes if you are um, a cinema lover, okay? Uh, a movie lover. Uh, you cannot take a, a portrait of the original, the real character of a story. Uh, thanks to virtual photography, you can take a, a portrait of the original creators of the original Lara Croft, and you can use your own eye and your own sensibility uh, to produce your vision about that character and that world, of course. And this, for me, is very, very fascinating uh, and is the, the main reason why I, thought, I fell in love with uh, uh, video game photography, virtual photography, call it whatever you like. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree on that point. I, I never thought of it that way, that this really is kind of the place where you can get the original subjects and do all that kind of stuff. That's fascinating. Uh, Mick, how about yourself? Yeah, I think we've just kind of heard the two um, ends of the, I don't want to call it a spectrum, but of the timeline in some respect. So I think virtual photography as we know it now, as in what the sort of social media activities around, is really something of a transformation of the capture art that began as an industry serving 
um, process, as such as what Duncan was talking about with producing stuff for magazines and for promotional materials. Um, and that, you know, was kind of, in terms of the perspective of the players, kind of an unknown uh, quantity. People didn't really understand that it was going on. Um, and it's really, I guess, in the last five years that things have really ramped up. They've accelerated so significantly, probably... Um, the, the PS4 share button would be an example of, of a, a kind of a turning point. And it's that um, point really where those behind the scenes tools have come out and reached, you know, uh, uh, the consumer audience. And once you let that loose into the, the greater wild of creativity, people get their hands on it. That's when you now end up with where, like what Christiana was talking about, the creative vision really comes into things. Um, and, you know, you, you have, say a photo mode that got a lot of people into it would be horizon zero dawn and it, it was just kind of that coming together of the beautiful game world a really strong lead character uh, a fantastic thematic setting you know with the machines etc so there's lots of interesting photographic subjects which is bringing people's inspiration in and you actually had quite a decent uh camera tool setup you know you've got something that uses genuine camera terminology uh, so it, people with a photographic background can apply that what they know about depth of field and field of view, etc. Uh, and also you had the really neat uh, control of the time of day. So I remember when it was new, I was a bit against that because I thought it seems like a cheat. You know, in, in, when I go out my real camera, I've got to wait for the right light. <laughs> but retrospectively, it totally makes sense because you can experiment with the light. And it's actually a really good starting point because um, it lets people play with light without necessarily having to sort of set up a full studio as you, maybe you can do in, uh, say, Spider-Man Miles Morales now. Um, but yeah, I think the, that bringing it to the to the core audience without the need for you know uh, capture cards and extra software in the background is what has really made the bridge between the the industry background and the creative outlet that it is now. Yeah, I completely agree that that you mentioned the PS4 share button. That that thing was huge mm. for me, just in terms of and on the controls in like games like you mentioned Horizon. That was huge. Spider Man was a really big one for me. The most mm. recent one on the PlayStation Four that had a wonderful photo mode in it. So we, we've kind of touched a little there on how uh, game developers have embraced kind of this virtual photography. But something I'm interested in is how the community has embraced it. And uh, if uh, Christiana, you, you might want to touch on that, but that, that's a question to everyone, sort of how the community has embraced virtual photography. Uh, well, uh, I think that might be a harder question than it seems. Um, of course, uh, um, gaming photography is a very powerful to tool uh, on the two sides. I mean, uh, um, it's cool for uh, the publishers uh, to have uh, almost uh, constant and infinite promotional material on the social media, totally user created. <laughs> they they don't have to, to, to do anything, okay? Uh, they just give us the photo mode and we produce tons of images. But on my side, uh, I think that it is very difficult to, to emerge if you uh, really are a photographer um, because uh, it really requires some skill not only to take great pictures uh, but to understand what a great picture is. Uh, so uh, on my behalf, I can say that uh, uh, th this is a bit stressing for me uh, because I know that uh, um, if I want uh, my work uh, uh, to be seen and to be known all around the world, actually now I am a little popular in my country, but um, not really all over the world. Uh, sometimes I know that uh, uh, producing great photography is not enough, okay? Uh, so, um, it's kind of a mixed bag, you know, it's a great opportunity, uh, for everybody, but uh, on the other hand, if you have, uh, something new to say, if you have talent, uh, not necessarily you become seen. 
Mm. Uh, Duncan, how, how do you feel about that? Like in terms of how the community has embraced it and sort of how you can get out there with that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky for me um, to speak on behalf of everyone else. Cause obviously I have the kind of, you know, in on the ground floor, whatever you want to call it, first mover advantage. Um, it's all, it's kind of something that I've taken for granted um, a bit. And, and at the same time, I'm kind of not, I don't know, I, the, 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 partly because kind of it's, it's my job, I suppose, and partly because I just kind of, it was always a sort of personal, um, I always kind of did it for personal satisfaction or just in, just a lot of curiosity just to know, just to know what a game was capable of. You know, I would just, I'd almost feel like it was a, a like a private conversation almost with the, with each game, just to to sort of like you know just just show me what what you can do. Um, so in that sense, I was never particularly moved to, or the exposure never felt like a big concern. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what the I could I, I couldn't tell you what the best way to go about it would be, if if that if that's what you wanted, um, or not at least not in a manner that kind of where you could guarantee the sort of the the purity or the or the integrity of what you were doing. Mm. I mean, I would certainly never. I appreciate. I'm, I'm probably going off topic. Um, <laughs> I'll move you never, back. Don't worry. <laughs> I, would, I would never. Um, I would never recommend to people to to try and to do things quickly for the sake of doing it first, or for the sake of generating content because obviously you know you, you referred to to social media and, and one you know social media will will always sort of um lure people into trying to do things quickly or first and those are quite poisonous for doing things well or doing things in a mass in a manner that is is interesting and might endure so mm-hmm. You know, so if you wanted to, if you wanted exposure, I, my advice would be to to do it. Um, to do it, obviously, to the to the best of your ability, and to take the to do it in a manner that you find interesting. To take as long as whatever vision you have, to to take as long as that vision needs, and to to be as meticulous as you can. And and um, and just give it, and just keep doing it. Mm. So that's always the that's always the secret to anything like this is just to keep doing it. Don't necessarily keep doing it all the time, but just 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 always sort of be there. So yeah. you have, you know, say you have your if you've got whatever your Flickr page or your wherever your your portfolio um, might be. You just keep doing it, and you keep getting better. And obviously, this is one of the problems with rushing things or falling into that trap of trying to to make content um, and to just try and to sort of flood the channel with with your stuff um, and to keep people engaged that way. The problem with doing that is that you will not progress. You will not improve you're just kind of you'll be spending so much time on the, the social aspects and on the, the generation of stuff that you don't give yourself time to to explore and, and you know evolve I so agree. yeah just mm. you know take your time and just keep plugging away at it and mm. if you do that for you know say you did that for two or three years you know you will get noticed in one way or the other i suppose um yeah I mean, I suppose we're, get, we're getting on a little to sort of advice for people that are looking to do virtual photography. And I mean, uh, Mick, one thing that might be interesting to discuss, like in terms of advice for anyone giving it a try, would be sort of the best games, in your opinion, for virtual photography. And we'll, we'll put that to everyone. But uh, Mick, what do you think? Um, well, I think f- before we go on to games specifically, um, I think uh, it's it's worth just. I mean, the social media side you just talked about uh, obviously has done great things for raising the exposure. 
but um, we've got different people coming into this from kind of different backgrounds, and we've got sort of players coming in from the enthusiasm about the game. You've got photographers coming in because they're into a photography background, and this is another another outlet. And I think in that we've got this kind of c- common desire that both all of these groups of people ha- want to create engaging and inspiring images. And in terms of my perspective, I mentioned earlier I'm a scientist by trade, so a lot of the ways I approach things is by understanding first, you know, breaking things down into compartments, understanding it, and then putting it to use to how to get the best out of it. So I would always encourage whatever the game is to analyze it to some respect you know to play around with it It, take advantage of the fact that virtual photography has this wonderful convenience about it you had film photography which was kind of expensive you were very limited in the number of shots you could produce on a roll of film digital photography took that to a another level by just letting you take shots and delete the worst ones and virtual (laughs) photography not only there's no penalty for error but you can create scenes that you wouldn't ordinarily be able to access in the real, or you wouldn't conveniently access in the real world. So there are a lot of games out there, but all of them have that um, advantage to it. Um, In terms of what would be an ideal starting point, I still think Horizon Zero Dawn in this age is, I mean, it's accessible in terms of the difficulty level of of the camera tools. Uh, but yet I think it has enough um, authenticity about it that you can produce real, um, you know, realistic. I don't mean realistic as in it looks photorealistic. I mean a realistic photograph that doesn't, that fools the eye, as in people are good at recognizing what looks correct. So you need the correct depth of field for something to give you the right amount of perspective on on an image, that sort of thing. And uh, Horizon has good tools for that. I think it also comes down to whether you have a particular style of image in mind. If you want something, um, you know, if you're interested in maybe macro photography, then I think God of War would be a good example. It's got exceptional character models and the camera in that, while it's very limited in its uh, bounding sphere, it does let you get extremely close and can focus very close. So God of War would be excellent for doing, say, macro or detailed work. Maybe then you want to do something outside of characters, um, Manifold Garden, for example, if you want abstract shots, because the temptation is often to just take loads and loads of pictures of the main character, um, which gets a bit same. You know, you see the same shots over and over again. So we definitely encourage people to try something with no character. And then you can just really concentrate on the composition, which ultimately is the most important part, I think, of photography. Completely. Manifold Garden's a stunning game as well, so a, a very good pick on that front. Uh, yeah. Cristiano, is there any games in particular that you would recommend people try for virtual photography? Yes, I think Marvel Spider-Man has it all, because you have a great subject uh, with the stylish, dynamic, fluid movements and with uh, a lot of history behind it. You have a great environment because you have uh, New York. You have a great photo mode, a really great photo mode, uh, a great lighting system, uh, especially now with uh, newest installments uh, on PS5 and with Miles Morales on PS4 too. Uh, the only the only backdrop is that uh, it is quite hard. So maybe it's not good as uh, your first photo mode to make experiments with, but uh, it, it is a very um, wide tool to, to express your creativity. Uh, for instance, you have the whole freaking Manhattan, so you can uh, just uh, do uh, street photography and totally ignore Spider-Man, for instance. You really can do anything with Spider-Man. Just, yeah. to, um, just to, sorry, just to butt in. Um, to um, kind of to address um, people who will probably be listening to this and wondering why people are talking about PlayStation so much, because pretty much every game has been a PlayStation. <laughs> you cannot overstate the importance of Sony in the evolution of this entire thing, and certainly the popularization of it. Um, 
you know, coming from the aforementioned uh, Gran Turismo 4, um, Sony's philosophy, you know, Sony's basically run with this and never looked back. Um, and you can, and what it's done is only possible because it has had a consistent philosophy shared within a vast family of studios who are all sharing technologies, APIs, whatever. Um, and, you know, Sony has always had this thing as well where they like to use the games as kind of clothes sources for the for the technology. And so as soon as the share button came along, that all but guaranteed mm. these photo modes were kind of here to stay. And, you know, PS5 is a massively important machine for photo modes because now it is hitting 4K with basically perfect anti-aliasing and image quality almost every time, um, which has always been a very big gulf between the PC um, sort of photo mode stuff and console. It was always that console stuff felt kind of ephemeral. Um, it's just It just was not the, you know, the photo modes felt a bit toy-like. The, the image quality was not really strong enough for it to survive you know beyond sort of social media thumbnails but with 4k um basically a standard that is going to change um and i would have thought as the with the, the fidelity of the games becoming greater more consistently i would have thought that sony will and its developers um will be able to relax some of those restrictions that have sort of stymied photo modes on console for a while things like the bounding spheres being really small um and you know the, the, just the ability stuff the stuff that is going into spider-man with being able to drop you know ray tracing shadow casting lights into you know being able to basically create light rigs around the characters mm -hmm. is you know you could see it coming a long time ago because of what was going on on pc um but yeah, to, to see that happening now on on console is is amazing. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is in many ways um, it's kind of just the start, really. For mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's just, sorry, Duncan. No, 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 I don't know. I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think it is. Uh, I mean, I've been convinced, and I, I keep on insisting on telling people that twenty twenty one was going to be a huge year in virtual photography. Um, and you mentioned that this is just the start, and I think it is the start in many ways. It's technologically now maturing, but we're reaching that point because uh, I think it was uh, you, Cristiano, earlier you said, um, or it might have been looking, that there was a kind of a stigma attached <laughs> to taking screenshots that people thought it was a bit of a silly thing to do. Um, and even in recent times with photo mods, people still assumed it was just a screenshot of the game, and they didn't quite appreciate the skill and the the technique that goes into composing a unique image. Um, but that awareness is what's also maturing now. And you're seeing this ready to expand and to sort of boom into a whole new space to reach new people bringing in all the time, such as exactly what this week is probably going to do. You're going to get awareness of people who didn't know about photomods before. And that's why it's the start of growth, not just in the technological maturity, but in the awareness in greater uh circles you know outside of core gamers yeah no uh, it's like you say you really can't overstate that share button as being like, i mean that was a huge thing for me uh, getting into uh, it got to a point like i said but i would be thinking i think i might enjoy photography <laughs> like, i think this might be something i like because i'm spending a lot you of time should. doing this <laughs> and uh yeah so speaking of the share button just quickly uh what would you say, uh, Cristiano, was a good way for people to share their creations with the world? Uh, sorry, can, can you repeat the question? Uh, uh, oh, of course. I listen to the first part. No, it's no problem. What would you say are some of the best ways to share your creations, your photographs uh, with the world at the moment? Uh, well, hey, you know, at the moment, uh, uh, it's all about social media, okay? So, uh, 
it mainly depends uh, on what social media uh, you can use the best. Okay, for instance, uh, I literally do not know how to use Twitter. Sometimes uh, I post something, I get zero likes, uh, I, I feel ashamed, I, I erase my post, okay? <laughs> Uh, so, um, first of all, uh, you, it's not only about uh, the, the platform you can get more views on, for, Instagram, for instance, Instagram and, uh, and Twitter, I think, are the best right now, okay? Uh, but uh, you also need to, to know that specific social media. Um, I think I committed all of the possible mistakes in this field. <laughs> For instance, when I started, I used uh, uh, Flickr, only Flickr, um, because um, um, it looked a bit more serious, more suitable to, to real photography, even though I was not making real photography. But uh, uh, after a while, I realized that nobody could see my pictures. Okay, uh, I know, for instance, Duncan uh, also uses Flickr, but Duncan is a living legend in this uh, field, you know, so it, it's a totally different thing. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that the, the most common platforms right now are Twitter and Instagram, especially if you are uh, capable of building your own community. And this uh, um, could also be um, something you, you do not necessarily do with, with, with pictures. It is important the ability to, to create your own network. I mean, yeah, I mean, just to, um, just to add, I think um, another another answer might be just to just wait a bit, because I mean, where this is all where this is all going, or one place it's all going, is that one day someone is going to try and set up a print shop for this stuff. Now that we have reached a point where you could conceivably want to hang this stuff on your wall um, because it looks that good. Um, Someone will try and do something like that, or they will try and do something. Uh, there'll be like an official photo mode thing that isn't what it is now, which is just kind of this fire hose of free publicity. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays a photo mode is kind of just there to, or like when you see a photo mode competition attached to a game, a lot of the time it's really just there to kind of drive engagement and because, you know, Publishers and developers are obsessed with with keeping people engaged for as long as possible. That you, it need, it, there will come a point where there's a slight change of tack, and this starts to get recognised a bit more as a kind of dare I say it as a as an art form. Um, and so, and you know, it might be Sony that does that, it might be someone else, but you'll see a higher level of higher level of curation i suppose mm. i think is what it needs it needs someone of some of you know of microsoft or sony's um reach and stature to sort of make it official and to put it front and center as well don't just have it buried on the flipping splash screen or the, the launcher for your pc game uh, or just fed out through your community channels on twitter you know stick it on the dashboard of the xbox or something so that it can't be missed you know and then mm. and and then do that curation where you're actually promoting you're not just leaving it to the gamers to just sort of give a thumbs up and just let mm. things float to the surface that way just curate it properly and show it at its best and when you get to yeah. that i think the whole thing will just explode then because because people will get you know a, a a glimpse of just what is possible and and people will naturally then start to emerge as you know personalities in the in this field mm. um we'll have a a way for people to to sort of specifically see their stuff and to follow them um because yeah. you know fewer and few, fewer people use twitter um and and gamers especially you know they don't talk about games they play games so they they will see this stuff ideally through their consoles so if you yeah. can yeah, 
you know, if you can stick it where they're going to see it, then then more people are going to get seen, I suppose. Yeah, that would be good. I mean, that that sounds like an ideal future. And like I said, here's hoping. I, bet, so I can't see why it couldn't go that way, but you never know. Anyway, we need to wrap things up. Uh, but uh, starting with you, Mick, if uh, you could give just one quick tip to someone who is looking to try out virtual photography, uh, not to put you on the spot, but well, <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> Uh, it probably goes back to what I said slightly earlier, the, if to experiment with the tools in front of you. Don't be afraid of them. There's no penalty for failure in this. You know, you can take as many pictures as you want. You can delete them all later. You don't have to do anything with it. But, um, you know, just just try things out. Don't be afraid to get a handle for what those tools can do. And then concentrate on composition. Composition is the thing that makes every image unique. You know, everything else can follow. If you get the composition, the lighting right, your images will will come through so yeah pretty much that <laughs> yeah uh cristiano yes sir what do you have a tip uh well it definitely takes time so i totally agree with duncan it totally takes time and it is hard it is not easy uh, so many people think that only because you can stop time in games then it is easy it isn't it takes time uh, to uh, take the one great shot you are looking for. It takes time to uh, have people notice you. Uh, it took me years. Uh, uh, when I, I realized what I was doing was not interesting only to me when I was selected uh, for the uh, God of War contest, both here in Italy and worldwide. But uh, I had already been practicing for years at the time. So be patient, have fun, experiment, and don't be obsessed with, am I good, am I great, can I become something? Okay, take your time. Uh, it's a long road. Uh, and the same is photography. I mean, uh, photography is not an easy art only because you have to make a click on a box. It's a language. Uh, learn that language. Get lost in that language. That's great. Uh, Duncan, how about yourself? Um, I, would, I would just say um, do it. Uh, do it for yourself. Um, just don't try and do something that other people are that you know has made someone else get lots of views on Flickr or whatever don't do don't try and become a kind of sort of social media seo expert and spend half your time trying to you know to to manicure your profile or whatever um just get get that kind of Find something about it that you really enjoy and then just spend as long as you want to take just just indulging in that. Um, because if you don't, if you're trying to do it for some cynical reason, um, it's just not going to last. You haven't really, you know, you haven't really adopted it as a hobby then. Like you have to, it's, it's like I was saying with that, that desire to, 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 to explore the technology and what have you. Um, you know, and I don't, I, I don't know really what to, what to add for that. Um, but, but yeah, I think you'll, you'll know. Um, I mean, other ways to put it is that it's, it's just, it does involve a lot of sacrifices. Um, I mean, I, it's, it's what um, Christiana was saying about the time it takes it is in a lot of ways it was it was the ruin of of gaming for me getting into all this because i got into this state of saying why am i playing this game properly when i should be getting better at doing the the screen and part of that was because it was kind of my job as well so um you know when i could be getting better at taking pictures of the games um you know i, I can't justify spending a whole day playing whatever red dead redemption when when i could be stuck in photo mode and every minute i'm in photo mode is is going to make me better at doing this and unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately there might be a an element of truth to that 
you will when you get kind of bitten by it you will sacrifice a lot to to just get to, to indulge it and to, to get better at doing it um mm -hmm. what unfortunately might be necessary i think especially if you because the big thing is if you if you want to get taken seriously for doing it you're going to have to differentiate yourself somehow and that takes a prodigious amount of time uh and effort and it really is quite arduous in that you could spend a day two days a whole night experimenting with this stuff and then in the cold light of day the next day everything you've done is rubbish um and that will you know that happens a lot and i imagine you know i'm not a real photographer i'm terrible at real photography um but i imagine that happens to real photographers a lot as well so you have to be ready to you know if you're going to take this thing seriously it might just cost you your your hobby of playing games <laughs> You got to own the craft. The, it's true. Some, some degree, because it does. It does. I mean, it taints playing. I've just, I've just very deliberately kind of quit the hobby side, just so I could get back into playing games properly. Because I just got fed up of playing through a game like Spider Man, and constantly think, you know, constantly having that twitch to go into the photo mode every time something cool was happening, or you know, to, or just constantly looking at it through this, no pun intended, through this lens of <laughs> photo modes. Um, so that is kind of the mindset that you might just fall into. Very less mm. than I guess you have to be prepared. I definitely need to, to add the one thing about this. Uh, don't play games only to take photos, okay? Uh, Take photos of games you enjoy playing, okay? If you don't like the game, you won't get nice photos. It's impossible. You really need to uh, enjoy the game uh, so you can understand uh, its characters, its stories. You cannot dislike a game or just be indifferent to it and hope you can get amazing pictures because it has amazing vistas. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, play your games, enjoy your games, and then pictures will follow. You cannot do the other, the other way around. Yeah. And similarly, On that note, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Nick. go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was just going to say, resist that temptation to try and document everything because you play the game through the oh there's another cool thing like you were just saying then duncan diving into the photo every opportunity resist that temptation to document everything um so a rule i kind of apply with my with my real camera is if i take the camera somewhere as long as i get one single image it was worth doing i don't need to come back with 500 pictures of every moment so one image is all, all you need mm. to be satisfied <laughs> So, you've heard from the experts, now give it a try yourself. Today, we're starting the London Virtual Photo Challenge. You've got a week to submit your best in-game and photo mode snaps. We'll curate all the entries and showcase them through the week. And then, at the end of the festival, we'll get our panelists back to comment and judge on the best ones. We want original pictures across three areas. Landscapes, portraits, and abstract. They can come from any game and any platform, but try not to submit anything that has been overly edited. Use the in-game tools on your game of choice and get the best shot. Submitting your art is easy. Just post your creations to Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag LGF Photo Mode. Feel free to tag in at London Games Fest of your creations too, and follow us for challenge updates over the festival period. The deadline to take part is midnight UK time, Saturday, 27th of March. Good luck. Thank you so much for joining us and do get involved with that competition. It just leaves me to thank my guests, Duncan Harris, Mick Bromley, and Cristiano Bonaro. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us and for watching this panel. There's going to be a ton more stuff coming up from the London Game Festival, so do stick around. But we will see you very soon and get involved with that competition because it's going to be pretty exciting and you're going to get to see your stuff. So thank you for joining us. We will see you soon.